went, became a bit of a recluse, went, went into hiding for about a year and subjected myself to these tones and frequencies. I was like, what's going on? What's, what's, what's this whole un, this invisible world right before us that's hidden? It's masked out, and and here we have these, what I all because I'd been in a band uh, all my life, and you know we'd always thought we played good music, you know, and and and. Um, and we knew what something was when it was in tune and something that wasn't in tune. But here, something came along and challenged that. And that sort of had a domino effect on my understanding of the world in general as to what other things do we believe as the gospel truth, literally, and, and, and probably are a need to be challenged or revisited. So anyway, being musical, I ex started exposing myself to these frequencies. At the age of 30, I wore glasses, um, probably too much computer. And uh, here's a funny thing that started happening in that room in that one year. So I was exposing myself to pure tones and frequencies and, and electronically generated. So obviously, I got into the math of it. I realized that there's the Fibonacci law of ratios that play out in nature and what this gentleman was exposing me to was one of those naturally tuned ratios. He was playing me the major third, sare ga, as you call it, the, the, the gandhar uh, within the spectrum. So the major third is one of the most affected notes of in, in this distribution, equal distribution of the octave. And um, when it first came out about 100 years ago, there was, there was a revolt in Europe. They called it the devil's third. It was so vile to the people, because their ears were actually tuned to natural music. I mean, you guys can go do your own uh, you know, research past this, if, if any of this interests you. But yes, it was called the devil's third. It was so vile, but you know, now it's become a standard. Uh, here's what started happening in that room. I didn't need my glasses in three months. I was healing at a cellular level. My hair started growing. Well, it, it was always a bit long, but started actually growing faster than uh, ever before. And I was not the only one benefiting from, from the exposure to these frequencies. I had a plant in the corner of my room. I'd, I'd got a, a little corner. And it was a money plant there that just went crazy. It, it started, I, I thought it was coming towards me, because one shoot of it was halfway down, down the room, and I was, what's with this plant? And uh, I eventually picked it up and put it near the speaker. It wrapped itself around the speaker. It, it just went, and subsequently, you know, if anybody who knows me or visits my place, I'm surrounded by plants, because I believe they give me a good indicator as to where the positive energies in a home are. Uh, you know, you, you put within a room, you'll realize um, that they're, they're positive and negative spaces, and you don't want to be sleeping in a negative space in a room. You know? And uh, plants are good ways to identify. If, if, if a plant's happy in a place, you're going to be happy in a place. So that's something to bear in mind. But it, within that one year, what started happening was um, strange things started happening. I became hypersensitive. These, these frequencies were doing stuff to me. They were, they were, they were breaking me down. And, and it's, it was almost like a metamorphosis of sorts where I believe, well, I hope, uh, the caterpillar became the butterfly. But, um, but there was definitely a transformation going on. And <clears throat> but the more the transformation happened within the room, the more I realized that I was not suited to the outside world. All the music I'd ever listened to the Zeppelin, Floyd, you name it. You know, all the stuff that, that we've grown up listening to, Doors and stuff. Um, I just couldn't hear it anymore. It, it, it did not sound right. And, and that was a very scary uh, reawakening into the world. Because, like, you know, uh, it, it can't all be wrong. But, but that's what it seemed. So basically, what had happened was I'd, I'd tuned myself into an alternative reality. And so vivid was that reality, that so real, 
that I tied a string on my finger, an invisible string, apparently. It's still there. I know it's there. I know nobody else can see it. But it's to remind me that that reality exists, and it's a very real reality. Subsequently, I've had to dull myself out back again to come back into the world and um, produce shows like Coke Studio, because they're not completely tuned to that understanding, but there is a sense of it in there. Because I really thought I needed to come out and do something with this understanding.